difficulties on my end, of course. <laughs> Okay, so um, let me know when you want me to start and I am ready. Anil sir, shuru kiya jai. Let us yes, welcome sir. everybody yes, and yes. Uh, start the lecture, yes. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, as usual, we start our program with a chanting of Navokar Mantra. So I request Dr. Kachara Saab, please uh, uh, give the Mangla Charan with Navokar Mantra. Kachara Saab, please. Namo, <coughs> namo Rihantanam, Namo Sadhanam, Namo Ayriyanam, Namo Vajjayanam. Namo loe sava sahunam Aso pancha namo karo sava pava panasana Mangalanam cha sava sim paramam hawaii mangalam paramam hawaii mangalam Thank you Kachara sahab uh, It is our pleasure to have Dr. Sherry with us She will give her talk on the conversation with Jains in U.S. about interfaith dialogue and cooperation. Dr. Sherry is co-founder of the Interfaith Studies Program in 2017 at Converse University after 16 years of experience teaching world religion, Jainism, and other courses in religious studies. She is currently an associate professor of religious studies, the curricular director of interfaith studies program, the religious studies coordinator and co-director of women's studies at Converse University. A Fulbright scholar, her research abroad in India resulted in numerous articles and the book Jainism, A Guide for the Perplexed. Her current research focused on interfaith cooperation. So now I invite Dr. Shelley to give her talk and please uh, make it slideshow because we are seeing multiple slides on the screen. Shelley, please. Um, uh, what did you ask me to do for the slideshow? Yeah, please uh, make it a slide show because we are seeing multiple uh, slides on the screen. That's what I've been trying to do. You can go to slides though. Uh -huh. uh, first go to share screen and then slide show. Okay. Mm. Yes, it is okay now. Yes, click it. Oh, right. Okay, so um, it looks like, uh -huh. let me just try one more thing here. And let's see. I think this might be the best I can do. Yes, it is okay. No problem. Okay. <laughs> All mm -hmm. right. Thanks for letting me know that that wasn't working properly. Um, so just a, just a, just a note about why I decided to um, do this project. Uh, the in the United States there has been a bit of uh, social upheaval that has been kind of disheartening for several years now with the controversial um, election of our previous president. And then um, 
we went into a COVID-19 pandemic and also some social unrest because of uh, uh, racial justice issues. And I, I decided to do this project because I just wanted to talk to people about do, you know, good things they were doing to cheer me up almost in a way. You know? So I wanted to focus on people who are, are doing good things in the world um, as a part of a, a personal way to cope with that situation actually too. And the conversations that, result, that I had with people in this project uh, were very meaningful to me personally. And this is this was one of the projects that I enjoyed the most of all the projects I've done uh, during my teaching career. So this talk is uh, based on an article that was published by the Journal of Interreligious Studies. And here is the link for that article. And this is the, the abstract. So drawing on interviews conducted before and after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and social unrest of 2020, this article, this presentation, will review some of the history of Jains involved in interfaith dialogue and cooperation in the United States starting in the late 20th century. And this is not an exhaustive list of all the Jains doing interfaith work, but the ones included here are Noresh Jain, Arvind Vora, Suleik Jain, Nikhil Boom, Punky Gala on behalf of Jains for Justice, and Narali Shait. And they describe their various approaches to interfaith work, ranging from apolitical to politically progressive, and give various descriptions of the two Jain practices or values, often primary to their interfaith efforts, Ahimsa and Anekantabad. So first of uh, um, all, so what is interfaith dialogue, interfaith cooperation? Currently in my country, it is, is defined, interfaith dialogue is defined as a means by which people within different traditions share about their own religious faiths with others who are also sharing about their own religious faiths. It is often meant to build bridges of friendship and understanding, to encourage peaceful pluralism, to be mutually inspiring and to promote the common good. Interfaith cooperation is working together across religions toward a common good uh, of some sort. So this would be people of different religions working on uh, various issues like climate change, animal rights, um, stopping human trafficking, that sort of thing. And if you're curious about how this is developing in the United States, I have that citation there. So the Jains I talked with about their interfaith, this type of interfaith work, cited Ahimsa and Anikantabada as important. And Ahimsa often provided the code of conduct or motivation for interfaith dialogue because this dialogue will help to promote a more peaceful understanding between people, which will therefore help to reduce conflict and deter hatred. Anekan Tavada often provides the method or guidelines for such dialogue by understanding that people have different points of view, by trying to understand others' perspectives, and by not assuming your own truth is complete or your own way is the only right way. And there was a tendency among people, the Janes I had um, the pleasure of interviewing uh, to sort of maybe perhaps not use the term intellectual ahimsa, but interpret it along those lines. So Naresh Jain, um, by the way, it, it, hey, um, about, most of the people um, I interviewed were the senior Janes who have done quite a bit of interfaith work. And Narish Jain is one of those. So for example, he represented Jaina at the Parliament of the World's Religions. And this is the largest interfaith organization in the world. Uh, he served as a two-term trustee at the parliament, chair of the finance committee at the parliament, chair of the public relations committee, member of the nominating committee, and is now serving as emeritus trustee. And Rush Jane was also involved in the Monmouth Center for World Religions and Ethical Thought, which is more local, in the Interface Center of New York, 
He was invited to uh, participate in a panel on religious religions as social inspiration at the American Museum of Natural History after 9-11. He was invited to South Orange Maplewood Community Coalition on Race in New Jersey to speak about the Jane religion and nonviolence at the Martin Luther King Jr. observance on January 21st, 2019. He has published a variety of articles on topics, including nonviolence, karma, ecology, interreligious experiences, and educating children living in poverty. And uh, is he's the co-founder of Educare Foundation, which works to help children of any faith or no faith and co-organizes still today interfaith programs in the Presbyterian Church of Rutherford, New Jersey. And so this is, a, this is not an exhaustive list of everything he's done, but I've included quite a few there. And so this is a quote from him in his perspective of uh, interfaith worth, work and he tied it into basic chain concepts this is how I understand the practice of Jainism, he said. First, a parikraha helps me to understand that attachments, including attachments to myself, cause all kinds of vices and misery. Second, therefore, I follow the fivefold code of conduct, which includes ahimsa, satya, asteya, brahmacharya, and parikraha. And third, anekantavada gives me a way to make an assessment of a situation and decide what to do by listening to people. Anikantavad is essentially open-mindedness. I relate this to the mantra Om when I speak to non-Jains about it. O for open and M for mindedness. It is not simply respecting others' perspectives, but really trying to understand them. It also creates good relationships with others and helps one to have a non-judgmental attitude. Fourth, no one can be 100% successful in not harming anything or anyone, so we have forgiveness. We have forgiveness and we seek forgiveness in Jainism. This is a very important part of Jainism and is something we do at the end of the annual rites of Parayushan. Arvind Bora, also senior uh, member of the Jain community in North America, uh, uh, represented Jaina at Religions for Peace. This is the second largest interfaith um, organization after the Parliament of the World's Religions. He's the chairman of the Long Island Multi-Faith Forum since its founding. The, this forum does interfaith dialogues with people, especially immigrants speaking for their own faith at places hosted by the Lions Club, the Rotary Club, community colleges, also puts on building bridges, outreach events to schools and other institutions. And Arvind Vora is uh, involved in the Shanti Fund, which promotes a culture of peace and nonviolence among children. And he said, interfaith work needs to come from the heart and to touch people's hearts. Interfaith work is important for promoting himsa, to promote peace and avoid war, because it helps us understand each other better. Anikantavada means that other religions have interesting things we can learn. They can give you a new understanding of your own faith. Anikantavada means that you can convey that you are right, but also understand that they are right too. You can understand others' points of view and therefore not become offended or violent. Nikhil Boom uh, is a um, of the younger generation of Jains involved in interfaith work. Uh, he's in his 30s, I believe. And he first got involved in interfaith work with the Religious Life Council at Princeton University, where um, he was basically invited to become part of the Religious Life Council um, as, as a Jain. And this led to other things. Interfaith is involvement in the Interfaith Youth Network at Religions for Peace. Again, the second largest interfaith um, organization in the world. He also was the youth representative for Anu Iba at the United Nations. He was also involved in the Parliament of world, World's Religions. Again, the, the biggest, largest interfaith organization in the world. 
in, as the treasurer and on the board of trustees, and he is now also a trustee emeritus. He has contributed articles about Jainism to a national newspaper, the Huffington Post. And now this interfaith work has led him to a career in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And diversity and equity and inclusion is um, uh, focused on efforts to include everybody, no matter their religion, their race, their sexual identity, um, whether they have disabilities or, or, or not, uh, various ages, for example. And he told me, currently, Jains show up to interfaith events mostly to educate others about their own religion and also to encourage other Jains to participate in such events. I would like to move toward looking at how Jains can participate in these forums by applying our principles, which are useful in interfaith engagements. For example, Anikantavada is about how to consider different points of view about the same situation. People will sometimes refuse to see the opposing side's point of view during conflicts, such as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But having a Jane in the room as a neutral third party using Ani Kantavada could help with this. We are a religion that does not have conflicts with other religions to begin with. And Ani Kantavada can further help to promote neutral perspectives and foster communication. I would like to see more Janes doing this. By the way, he also said that he he does uh, also do some uh, things to educate others about Jainism as well as part of his interfaith work. And Sulegjis. Okay, so his current focus is on interfaith cooperation with Sikhs to establish Jain studies at universities in the US with endowed chairs. So for example, there are two separate endowed chairs in Jainism and Sikhism at the University of California, Irvine and uh, a chair in Jain studies at the University of California, Davis. There are clinical professorships in Jain and Sikh studies created by a funded 50, that were uh, funded 50-50 by Jains and Sikhs at Loyola Marymount University, which has changed to two separate endowed chairs endowed chair of Jane studies at the University of Santa Barbara, which previously had uh, Sikh studies and more. It's a long, long list. He's also written a book, Ahimsa Crisis, You Decide, and advocates for a way of living in a modern world that is compassionate towards all living beings. He has also written articles on a variety of subjects such as Ahimsa, Anekantavada, Aparigraha, environmentalism, human rights, and interreligious understanding. So um, it, for those of you who may not know, uh, during this period, there was a Black Lives Matter protests because African-Americans um, uh, were, were protesting um, other African-Americans being killed by police. And it was a very, very tense time in the United States. And so about Black Lives Matter, Black people have been affected more negatively by COVID-19 and the economic situation. It is our duty to care about this. Janes have been feeding thousands of people every weekend. Our Jane community collected a lot of money to provide tablets to poor children of different races so that they could continue to receive an education when it went online because of COVID-19. Interfaith is not about tolerating. It is about how, how we alleviate others' pain and suffering. We support black lives, but we, we aren't going to go out in March because of COVID-19. I should have been there, but there's a virus. We have helped by donating tablets instead. And also, it is not about just learning about your neighbor, but learning about how you can help your neighbor. This is the next growth of interfaith work. We need to move beyond talking with each other. After understanding my neighbor, I need to help be a helpful source or partner in the journey of life. Before it was live and let live to not cause suffering. That was passive. Now we are saying I will not cause harm or himsa and I will also actively help if someone is the victim of himsa, care and share. Jane's for justice. 
is an organization that was founded in June 2020 during the protests for racial justice in the United States. These are, members are young professionals and students, Janes of all sex and subsex. They employ on, on Kantavada as empathetic understanding of those who are oppressed and empathetic un understanding of their points of view. They employ ahimsa as protection of those who are harmed by prioritizing perspective, their perspectives in order to not be complicit in and to help stop the harm done to them. They are engaged in social justice projects that include gender and sexual identity, disabilities, animal rights, civic engagement, and race, caste, and religion. And they plan to engage in interfaith cooperation with other religious groups working on these issues. So the protests, before I read this, were spurred on uh, the killing uh, by police of uh, George Floyd, that person in particular, spurred the protests of 2020. And so this is uh, referring to that. Um, Anikantavada is about perspectives, understanding where other people are coming from. There was a lot of propaganda floating around the Jane community about things like George Floyd, for example, that he was a criminal, so why should it matter what happened to him? And George Floyd is an African-American. So we explain the other side. Dylan Roof, a white man, killed people in an African-American church and the police sat him on a curb, gave him water, and stopped for food for him after they arrested him. George Floyd may have used a counterfeit bill, but that does not mean it was right for the police to behave the way they did, did to him. And if you don't know, um, a policeman kneeled on his neck for eight minutes, basically, um, and he died as a result. A Jane scholar we spoke to described Anikantavada like this. When we think about karma, we cannot place ourselves in their shoes and assume that their karma is in a, situ in a situation, what their karma is in a situation, such as bad karma that is resulting in their suffering or oppression. We have to think about our karma. From that perspective, it is never okay for us to kill or be complicit in killing another human being. And finally, Nurali Shait uh, does some interfaith work that's a little different. Uh, she creates videos on YouTube to educate people um, about Jainism and also on a variety of, of, of subjects. And she's, she's the youngest person, um, one of the youngest people I talk with uh, here. And the purpose of her ch uh, sharing these videos is for Jainism to be more understood and included in a pluralist society in the United States. Plural society means various religions, just um, kind of getting along basically. And she said, I realized at a certain point that no one knew that my what my religion meant, but I learned every Friday evening about it in my childhood. I wanted to create something accessible for people my age. I wanted people to know about my religion. People are genuinely interested. I can't speak for everyone in Jainism and I don't know everything. I still have a Jain community where I live, but a lot of Jains don't and it's harder for them. In high school, the principal would not, not let me take a day off for one of my religious holidays uh, for Pariushan because it was not on the official list he had of various holidays. So my target audience was non-Jains and to give a watered down version of what I learned about Jainism. Now on YouTube, you know, there's a comment se section and trolls are people, you know, is a term used for people who um, basically uh, type in hateful comments. And so she says, aside from trolls, I've had lovely comments. Sometimes the questions are too complicated and sometimes other Jains in the comment section can answer those better. You can be kind to people even when they're trolling. I let the trolls be rather than deleting them like some people. I think that she may have changed that. She may be deleting them now, but I'm not sure. So in, in conclusion, all the different approaches included here achieve both a balance and also a breadth that no one or two people could have achieved alone, I believe. The lack of central organization of these efforts allows each person the freedom to contribute to interfaith work from their own points of view. 
these approaches have overlapping but somewhat different priori priorities that parallel the larger trends in interfaith work across religions and interfaith organizations. And these range from non-interfering mutual appreciation to more help-oriented approaches to some combination of these two. And these choices between these two, whether to be non-interfering or to be actively helpful, um, are sometimes very fluid as people struggle to decide and sometimes disagree about what might be the best way forward, especially during a time of social upheaval, such as experienced in 2020 in the United States. So it was truly an honor and pleasure to talk with Janes about what was in their hearts concerning Ahimsa, Anik Mantabada, and interfaith work. The article on which this presentation is based was researched and written in a collaborative and transparent manner with all participants having multiple opportunities to change whatever they decided to change throughout the various stages of finishing the article. All the people mentioned here also gave their permission for me to be to to be permission to be included in this presentation. And there are many more Jains involved in interfaith efforts in the US and India that are not included in this article and presentation due to certain practical constraints. And I look forward to any comments from other Jains doing interfaith work during the time allotted for discussion after this presentation. I'm assuming there's some time allotted for discussion here, perhaps. So that's it. Thank you so much. Anil sir, unmute kijiye. Anil sir, unmute kijiye. Anil sir, unmute kijiye. Sir, unmute kijiye. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Shadi, for your nice presentation. You included all the uh, voices working for this interfaith work, and uh, you are also doing a good work there. Nice presentation. And now this forum is open for the question. If you have any question, please raise your hand. And anyone... Yeah, Pokhana please, start with you. Yes. Uh, 